Hi, welcome back to Jazz's Kitchen. This is how I talk now. The idea behind this drink is that every component of the drink is made from one ingredient, limes. Oops, all limes. I got a lot of explaining to do. If you've watched my super juice videos, you know, peel the juice, you juice the thing, you peel it, you make the super juice, and what you get left over is lime peels. We're gonna take those lime peels, make a lime chong or a syrup, by adding sugar, then that's going to ferment with some water and agave into this lime pulque or lime wine, if you will. And then the final step, Charmander, Charmeleon, Charizard. I've been wanting to try something called freeze distillation. It's basically the same as regular distillation, but reverse. In normal distillation, you boil a mash, then the vapors, alcohol vapors collect and come down, you get spirit. This, we're freezing the water, then we're gonna drain out the alcohol and leave the water behind, thus making a spirit. We're gonna take this lime scrap wine, freeze it, let all the water freeze solid, and then we're gonna drain out just the alcohol, the spirit. So here's the lineup. So we have our lime juice, the super lime juice that you've seen me make on the channel before. Peels that are left over from making the lime juice get put in sugar and creates a nice limey syrup. That's what this chong is, Korean fermented syrup. So I'm gonna start by tasting the chong. Very sweet and sour at the same time. Um, almost no bitterness, actually. It's like a sweet and sour, like lime candy. It almost tastes like a lime skittle, like sour skittle. Any funkiness to it? Not really. We can take this base syrup as it's fermenting, add water to it, and we get a little bit of a wine situation. This I was trying to carbonate to put on top, but as you can see, I think I waited too long. So it's, it's not, it's not very carbonated. We were hoping for a bit of a fizz, but uh, alas. I just waited too long to like put it in the bottle. Okay, this is funky. Definitely fermenty, like esters and stuff happening here. I wouldn't say like lime is the first thing I smell. Okay, hmm, that's kind of good. It tastes like wine. Maybe say it's on the Riesling spectrum. It has like a nice kind of velvety body to it, kind of funky on the nose, but then it has a lot of like floral nature to it. And then there's the citrus. It does feel like there's a decent amount of alcohol in this. If I were to guess, like 12%. It's not like that. It's just kind of overwhelmingly acetone. Mm. Sad, okay. <laughs> We can then take this wine, which as I said, I fermented quite a, a while. So I waited for the bubbles to basically stop. And that's how you know that you've reached maximum capacity on alcohol content. You can freeze this and you get this lime spirit, if you will. So it's like a high proof lime spirit. I wonder if I can light this on fire. Okay, so I feel like this is just this, but like yeah. concentrated. Yeah. So which would stand to reason. Lime booze. Homemade lime booze. <laughs> I should probably like give some sort of disclaimer or something. Don't try this at home or for legal reasons, you should look into your local laws and also speak with your uh, physician. Yeah, and I would not recommend like drinking too much of this at all. Right. I mean like the legs on that. See how thick that is? You see him? <sighs> I'm kind of scared. We've had some gnarly shit. Snake mezcal, we had that recently. Cobra. I'm just gonna go for it. Mouthfeel, it kind of feels like green chartreuse. It's thick and hot. Like, you know how green chartreuse is like syrupy a little bit, but also ha has that like heat behind it as well. Flavor of it is sort of, it's very like, bitter, pithy kind of. Maybe the alcohol is amping up that like bitterness. There's also this like kind of funky, almost rotted fruit rum thing. It smells like if you left a lime out until it got kind of black, or like if you've let a lime like over ripen and try to use the juice from like a really mushy lime. Police are coming for you.
beautiful. Just in the nick of lime. Yeah! I'm kind of excited about this. I mean, look, it's got a good little frothiness to it. Mm-hmm. It's been sitting for a second, too. Yeah. It looks appetizing. It smells very limey and, like, in a very complex way. So let's, let's dig in. Whew. I think I did, I think I did it. I think I did the thing. How do I even describe this? I'm inside of a lime. It has like fresh lime, brightness, acidity, floral, very citrusy, a lot of depth to it, especially towards the like back palate and like at, at the finish. It finishes quite long. There's this like sour Skittle vibe that's happening, lime candy. Then there's also uh, like a bitter pithy thing. There's definitely like a kick from the alcohol, yeah, it's it's pretty good. That one gulp was like, it's still kind of taking over my entire brain. There's also quite a bit of like body to this as well, which is probably what's giving this so much of a foam on top. It's really staying. I mean, I think this is the limiest drink maybe ever made. As someone who's been obsessed with limes for basically my entire life, and now we've reached the pinnacle, oops all lime. I think this is like really, really cool. I'm really proud of it. It's like a really complex spectrum expression of lime. It's kind of all there. I think it's great. Thanks for watching. I hope this is interesting or inspiring. I think this is a really great example of like all the things you could do with one lime. If you have any other ideas on how to close loop on citrus, I'm always trying to use to get the most out of the citrus fruit that we do have. Thanks for being here. Like, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.